Okay, today I have obtained the famous Instagram egg. To the date of filming this video, it has over 48 million likes on Instagram, the most liked photo ever. And on YouTube, Mr. Beast made a video with a photo of the egg as his thumbnail, trying to make his video the most liked video ever on the history of YouTube. So what I'm going to do with the egg today is I'm going to take another popular request that I've gotten multiple times, and I'm going to try to make a homunculus. Now, if you don't know what a homunculus is, it's something weird that came about with some videos posted to the internet where a guy tried to form a crossbreed species of a human and an egg and he showed himself breaking open the egg and there was this creature in there and he started feeding it and it started growing a little bit and it would grow and he'd post videos every few days or every few weeks and it got bigger and bigger and it had these weird things that it would do and eat. So in order to do this, first we need some of my own DNA. And lucky enough for me, in a previous video, I collected saliva to see how much saliva I could produce in one day. And I collected a bunch of spit throughout the day. So I'm going to be using that saliva and extracting my DNA out of it and then injecting it into the egg. So first, let me show you how to extract DNA from different things. So I showed you in a previous video how to extract DNA from strawberries and kiwis, and I even did it for shrimp. So what I'm going to do to extract the DNA is I'm going to mash them all up and then I'm going to use a soap and the soap will break the cells open and release the DNA. And then I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and that alcohol will make the DNA coagulate together and float to the top. Okay, so first what I do is just get some regular water and then pour some Dawn soap in it. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some salt in it. So what the salt's going to do is it's going to help break up the proteins that are holding some of the DNA together. So basically it's just gonna help release the DNA easier. Okay, and now you mash up the strawberries. Okay, and now for the gross one. Okay, so now even though this looks mashed up, all of the cells that are in there are still whole cells. To break these up now, you can't do it physically, you need to do it chemically. And that's where the soap comes in. And then you pour some of the soap in with the smashed strawberries and just mix it around for a while. Okay, now I just need to filter out the strawberries. Okay, so this is pretty bubbly, so let's let the bubbles separate for a little bit. Okay, and then you just pour your alcohol down the side of it. And you can see that stringy stuff forming in there. That's the DNA. Okay, it looks like we've got some floating to the top. Here it is, <laughs> strawberry DNA. Now today, instead of using human reproductive cells, what I'm going to be doing is using my own cells from my cheek. And I got these from using my own saliva in a previous video. Now it is possible to fertilize an egg with a non-reproductive cell. Now one of the ways that reproductive cells are different than normal cells is the reproductive cells only have one copy of their chromosomes. And the reason they only have one copy is because then they can combine with the copy in the egg and they can combine together and it mixes the genetic material to produce offspring. But for normal cells from your cheek, there's two copies of the chromosomes. So fertility researchers from Monash University in Melbourne, Australia, they were actually able to successfully fertilize an egg using a normal diploid somatic cell. That means they were able to fertilize an egg using cells that had two copies of its chromosomes, a non-reproductive cell, which is pretty interesting. So I now have my lice cells with the DNA exposed, and now I'm going to put them into the egg. So what are the chances that you think we're gonna get a homunculus forming in here? Let's check it out. Okay, here we go. Let's inject my DNA into the egg. Okay, 
It is done. Okay, the next step he says in the video is to tape it up. Tape up the hole in the top. And then put it in a plastic container, he says. The lid on it. <clears throat> then keep it somewhere warm. And it has to be there for 10 days. And you can't look at it the whole time that it's in there. So let's leave it in here for 10 days and see what happens. Okay, so while we're waiting, let's talk a little bit about whether you think this is going to be possible or not. Now the reason this seems impossible because in nature you cannot fertilize an egg with the reproductive cells from another species. Now there are some examples in nature of species that have mated and had viable offspring. Now some of these are a zebra and a donkey mated together to form a zonkey, a lion and a tiger together make a liger, a jaguar and a lion together make a jaglion, and of course a female horse and a male donkey make a mule, which you've probably heard of before. Now when different species do mate and have viable offspring, what happens is their offspring now can no longer have any children. And so that's why you'll never see a species of ligers around because the ligers cannot have viable offspring, so they can't have any children of their own, so they can't form a new species together. But for all those genetic hybrids that I've listed, you'll notice that most of them are pretty similar already. So in order to make any viable offspring from two different species, those species have to be very closely related. So does it really seem possible that human DNA and chicken DNA could form together to make some new weird chicken-human species? Well, believe it or not, this has happened in the past. In 1976, scientists actually fertilized a hamster egg with human reproductive cells. Now, none of these fertilized hamster cells were actually implanted in a hamster or a human or anything, so it's not like the cells divided and started to grow, but they did show that it was possible for two completely different species to actually fertilize an egg of another one. Now, I'm not sure how ethically this study was even able to be done, but it was in 1976 and things were a little bit different back then. So how were they able to do this and why is it so difficult for different species to fertilize the egg of another species? Now one line of defense that an egg cell has against being fertilized from a different species is something around the egg cell called Zona pellicida. So in order to be fertilized, it has to be the same species that interacts with this zone around the egg. If it's not the same species, then it won't be able to get through here and interact with the inside of the egg cell. So if this is species A and this is species B, they won't be able to interact. But if this is species B as well, then it can get through this zone here and it can get inside of the egg cell. Then once it's inside, the two cells can fuse together and the egg is now fertilized. So what these scientists did, as unethical as it sounds, is they took hamster egg cells from specifically a Syrian golden hamster and they removed this outer layer from around it. So they took this off and then they fertilized it with human reproductive cells. And they actually found they could do the same thing with hamster, pig, mouse, and human DNA. So basically you could fertilize any of these eggs with pig, mouse, human, or hamster DNA. It didn't matter. Now as I said, they never implanted these eggs because the study was just to test if it could be done. It's almost certain though that if these were implanted, there's nothing that would grow from this. Because the more different a species is, the more likely it is that their DNA is not compatible. Most likely the cells wouldn't be able to keep growing because of how different the DNA is. Okay, now let's check this out. It's been 10 days. Let's see what it looks like. Smells a little bit. It's like it's leaked a little bit here. Okay, let's crack it open. What do you think we'll find? Whoa, something's there. What is that? Whoa. Hmm. 
Look at that. It actually grew something in there. Or did it? Do you want to know what it grew in there? A piece of sponge that I stuck in the egg during those 10 days. So no, this did not grow a homunculus in there. In fact, it didn't do anything other than just rot. And that's the same thing that happened to the guy who created this homunculus thing. It didn't grow anything. He just put something in the egg to make it look like it grew something. The entire thing is for sure faked. There's absolutely no way that you can combine human DNA and chicken DNA to form a fertilized egg, especially in this situation, the way that he did it. The reason is, for example, even in the scientists who were able to fertilize hamster eggs with human DNA, notice that they had to take out the ZP area around the egg. And also, because chickens are not mammals, our proteins are so different on the cells that even if you were to inject it in and you are able to remove this outer zone here, they still wouldn't be able to be fertilized because of how different their proteins are. It wouldn't result in cell division at all. So a homunculus is definitely nothing to do with a human chicken that have combined together in some freakish fashion to make some kind of a monster. Now in the past, besides this YouTube video, there's been a lot of people who have claimed to have made one. Most likely what happens here is when you let something sit like an egg for 10 days and it's not sterile, there's a lot of stuff that can happen to it depending on what you've injected inside of it and how clean it was and whether there was fungus associated with it or bacteria. There can be a lot of growth that happens because the egg is actually a perfect place for cells to grow inside of. In fact, you actually can grow animal cells inside of an egg. It's not creating some new organism, but all it is is allowing an environment where you can get cell division to happen. And for those of you who are actually worried that I wasted a precious Instagram egg on this experiment, well, believe it or not, this was not a fertilized egg. Most eggs that you get from the store are not fertilized eggs. And it's interesting to think about, have you ever thought about which part of the egg actually becomes the chicken when it is fertilized? So next time you crack open an egg, try to look for a little white spot on the egg. This white spot is the germinal disc. And if it were fertilized, that's the part that would turn into a chick. And as the chick grows, it will use the proteins from the egg and assemble it into its own proteins and its body will continue to grow. And what's interesting is it still needs oxygen while it's inside of there. And there's a tiny little air bubble in every egg and that's where the bird gets its oxygen as it's growing. And the oxygen from the atmosphere diffuses through the egg into that little air pocket, and so it can continually refresh the oxygen inside of there. And that's how the chicken grows inside of the egg. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out and head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the new Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.